Mr. Hosey's stay was a brief one in the first of these semi-finals. Just four balls, caught in the deep. Slower ball, and that's what, what worked for Meshte up in the quarter-final. And he took three cheat wickets, three for 17, I think, in four. And once again, he just took a bit of pace off the ball. You can see it was an off-cutter or a fast off-spinner. And Hose just couldn't quite get enough pace on the ball. Nye Donald out in the deep taking a simple catch. Bats across. Sibley once again fetches it through the leg side. We'll keep the strike. End of the seventh. 69 for two. Yeah, brilliant power play this time around. Ed Pollock really from 4 1, just really cracking the ball everywhere. They tried to bowl it. The Glamorgan bowlers trying to go full and straight and try and use a little bit of pace off, but it didn't really matter today. You just kept banging it out the ground. Yep, fast hands through the ball. Nice flow to his game. And a lot of confidence as well, just to come out on the big occasion and uh, have a go from the word off. Ingram, who bowled the first over of the innings, back now bowling his leg spin. Oh, I love that call. Pitch is a, a little drier, a little less grass than we've seen for the Champions Trophy games and the Test matches. Maybe there'll be a bit of help for the spinners today as we go through the day, but against that, there's going to be a heavy dew tonight. Oh, on, yeah. Hey, look, the beauty of a pitch, the covering of grass is very even, it was solid. Looking out there earlier on this morning, it just yeah, there was a couple of hints of maybe someone saying it might get a bit, a little bit of turn as the day goes on. I don't think it'll be excessive. Bowlers will take anything, anything just to give them a chance. As Hayne clips through midwicket, started the, the blast off at the top of the order. But with the way that Birmingham's team has changed through the competition, he finds himself now down at number four and in the middle order. He's only 22, but he'd be one of the more experienced batsmen, certainly when you look at the top three. <laughs> sign there that there's a bit for Ingram and yeah, we saw a little bit from Mercedes over also didn't we just the ball sticking or gripping a little bit in the pitch you can see there it's just held a touch Sam Hayne trying to work it next side yep and all those uh, playing the second semi will be watching this with interest what works what doesn't so far from what we've seen you'd say pace off is going to be a significant part of uh, both these semi-finals. The variety with the ball and the ability to remove the pace. Yeah. 74-2. Nice lads who are just about to set off, I think, just coming down to the ground now, obviously playing the second semi-final today. I think they might have just arrived actually at Edgebaston. Got a camera uh, checking them out. I'm sure their coaching staff will be watching the game, if not the players. I'm sure they will be, yeah. Luke Wood giving us the, the inside there. Very interesting, look very relaxed. It's a big part of Craig Mashader's game in one day cricket nowadays. He sort of developed himself, obviously playing at Taunton. And then there almost seem up just sort of angling back in and nipping back in off the scene. But back in the time when he played at Somerset, he had to try and work out a plan of how he's going to bowl on the pitches down there. This was the sort of method he sort of developed. Yes, Messi, yes, Messi. Yeah, with Chris Cook up to the stumps as well, that's an important part of it, an important combination, particularly on those slower surfaces down at Cardiff. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be the way. Gradually as the day goes on, more and more people will be looking to take pace off. It's definitely 
a little bit of assistance when they do. see that you think Jonathan Trott don't you there's so much of Jonathan Trott in Sam Haynes game the way he sets up and then uh, anything straight round about middle middle and off the way it just works it through the onside I don't know about you but if I tried that way I would be kicking everything <laughs> just it baffles me a little bit Very straight. Oh, what a good shot that is. With two men out, long off, long on. You've both got to hit it hard and place it to perfection to get a boundary there. Yeah, a little bit unorthodox here. Again, we're showing a wide of the crease, a cutter. But it, the key to this is how well he struck the ball. David Miller's fast and a great fielder, but he can't get around to stop this one. are in a little bit here at Edgebaston today but it's a reasonable size ground don't think many miss hits will go for six today see they're just in a little bit but it's still a it's not a postage stamp by any means it's looking impressive the ground here obviously the crowd is filling up all the time Either the Knox fans and the Hampshire fans are easing their way into the day There's plenty of people here having a great time Sibley's game get it over to my side end of the ninth 83 for two yeah it was Pollock really at, uh, first over that went 10 second third over a really good start and it all came from Pollock I think Sibley only had three of the first 50 runs that were put on the board continues Decent sized boundary, it's not big enough. Miller, I think it is, out at deep, wide, long on. And Ingram has his first wicket of the afternoon. Dominic Sibley not really getting near this one. I think it's a bit of a top spinner. Just getting it too high. Miller, David Miller is quick across the ground and easily taking this one. Ingram is delighted. Simply goes for 27. It bears 83 for three. And at the crease, Hayne and now Grant Elliott, the captain. 9.2 overs, almost halfway through the innings, 83 for 3, set the wasp at around about 180. That is a good start. Sam Hayne, who's only faced three balls so far, but nails that reverse sweep to the fence. There you go, again, the modern way, a wicket falls, very next ball. Sam Hayne almost just sees this as a normal shot. Takes out the element of risk, it's a cracking area. He's got it and the topspin has taken it away. Well, there's going to be some great fielders on show today. David Miller will be up there for sure. He's fast, he's got good hands. Excellent anywhere in the field, in the deep, in the circle. A real athlete.
they're wide I think it's down the leg side by Tim Robinson signals the wide a couple of key areas now obviously Grant Elliott come in huge amount of experience tends to read the game very well just one of those guys that just seems to know the situation understands what needed deep mid-wicket was just in off the fence about 20 yards there to ensure that uh, no twos to be had three down I mean just lost a couple of wickets maybe gambling that they're not going to go for the big hit again oh, on it. just dinking into the leg side but no twos with that man in off the fence we're halfway there 92 for three well it was Ed Pollock 50 from 27 who got things going for Birmingham Sibley made 27 from 23 Hose fell cheaply Hain and Elliot at the crease were halfway through the innings 92 for 3 it's Nick and Fred thanks sir well because of the start Ed Pollock gave them they can just afford to knock it around just for a little while Sam Hain down the order rejigging with the Ian Bell being left out so he's got a little bit more depth in that middle order all going to be good though since that early onslaught What a blistering start that was from Pollock in particular, playing shots all around the wicket, and then now the Morgan just settling in, just getting back into this game. But Ashley Giles was just so screwed. Be a happy man so far. Yeah! Big appeal, yes, given on one knee, trying to hit the ball square, sweeping it away. It's one of his favourite shots, but it doesn't work today. Hain goes. Yeah, Birmingham losing the fourth wicket, Hain going for the big sweep shot across the line that hitting him in front of the middle and off and the finger goes up from umpire Alex Wolf. and Birmingham losing the fourth wicket on 93 <laughs> Surrey down at the Oval, they chase 205 there, like in different circumstances here, they do have some batting debt, Ambrose is due in next and Chris Wokes is playing today instead of Hand and Dolby. Still plenty of work for these two to do, plenty of experience in the middle now, as you see the LBW again, just hitting him on that off stump, going on to hit middle, good decision from Wharf. But a good passage of play for Glamorgan, got back into this game after Pollock at the top was taking it away from him. Yes, boy. Well, one of his great skills, Elliot, is just reading the game situation and that's uh, what he's going through now. He's trying to work out what score they need and how he gets there. So tough though on this pitch, you've seen it's a good pitch. You get off to the start, they did do with Pollock, and they're probably thinking we get 200 here, 220. Now I've just got to reassess a little bit. <coughs> what do you think is a good score, Nick? I reckon 180 ish, somewhere around there. I mean, they'll know conditions better than any of us because they play here day and now. I mean, look at the pitch, the pitch looks a belter, it really does. And I think sometimes when a player comes out and plays like Pollock, you start getting ahead of yourself a little bit. You start thinking 220 when actually it isn't a 220 pitch. But then you look at the firepower on both teams. It's hard to know how many is enough. You got Ingram. Yeah. 
Brooks at the moment. Three runs, just three in a wicket. 95 for four. Yeah, he's been good, Machine. He bowled his three overs just for 16 runs, two wickets. Just what Glamorgan needed at that point. We see at the start the Pollock going hard. Big overs in the power play. And then now Glamorgan just dragging himself back into this game. I think Robert Croft and the Glamorgan players at the minute will be happy with where they are. Yeah, it's about the Croft team. Done a terrific job. Very, very fine cricketer himself. Good to see him doing well as a coach. Had uh, quite a say in this young man's career as well. It's a good pitch, but I think as the day goes on, spin's going to come into it more and more. Everybody who's been out there thinks it's going to start turning. Oh. Lovely shot. Finds the gap. Can't quite get around. Desperate dive in the end. That's why he's so good. Very calm at the crease and just ticks his gaps. Yeah, lovely shot. Giving himself a little bit of room there, Grant Elliott. Opening up that offside. Just throwing his hands through the ball and beating the man out on the street. A desperate dive, but in vain. Catch it! Oh, yes, Salt, yes, Salt. He came from a little earlier than he needed to. He spent some time, I think, playing in the second team before the T20 competition started. Oh, yeah, he just wanted to get uh, fully acclimatised to conditions. Oh. Oh. So he's not a, an overseas player or... A, Cold pack player, they'll just uh, fly in and just play the tournament and go home. It's very much part of the club. That's why he was given the captaincy when Ian Bell was stood down. Yes, Artie, yes, Artie, yes. Artie. Shows you've got good depth in your side when you can leave out players like Ian Bell. Go up to Ian Bell and say, you know what, Bell, just sit this one out. We've got some young lads going to play. Much as anything, 100 up now. Ian Bell thing is almost playing the modern game now. Ian Bell in great form on a good pitch can score quickly enough, but we don't always get them. Now they've got a lad at the top there that can get them off to the flyers. They're just ticking over. These two very experienced cricketers. Six from the over, 101 for four. Just shows how well the Morgan have done after the power play. We saw the first 50 come up, just 25 balls, 47 for the second 50. Just looks in danger at one point that Birmingham are going to take the game away with Pollock. They're taking wickets at good times. A wicket now. Trying to expose that late middle order. And the pick of the ball was so far in Mercedes. Two wickets for 16. The open is expensive. I ain't doing finals there, Fred. Your first finals there. The first one in the pod. Yeah, back. The thing about finals there, you turn up to the ground. There's a buzz, there's an expectancy. So the crowd there, uh, everybody can't wait to get in. We see the ground's nearly full now. It's still very early, coming up to 12 o'clock. But I've been here as a player, I've been here as a spectator. Now it's my first time in the pod. And so far, so good. I've only mispronounced one person's name. <laughs> Who's that? Zaidi. When I was going through the sixes before. <laughs> Don't know what I called him. Catch it! In the air, but finds the gap, importantly. Man at point has no chance. Races away, another boundary. Yeah, he's strong through the offside. He's Elliot. Opens it up. Got a batsman who's going to get his foot across. Goes straight down legs them. Opens up that offside. Gets him past point. And we see this is a fast outfield. Anything past the infield, the sweep on the boundary is going to struggle. He's looking set now, Grant Elliott, like he did in the quarter final. And it's the Birmingham what? Today? Burrs. 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 <laughs> Not used to that. I've got enough with keys in. Burrs. The amount of people on social media having a go. <laughs> See Grant Elliott, no flick from the ball, so no chance of a run out. The impressive thing about Elliott though, he just looks in control of his game, doesn't he? Well, 
Schultz to his centre back. Good decision. Don't think it had got back. Yeah. We used to call the Colt Square the practice ground. I think probably that's what they call it now. Very good facilities. Yeah, Knox going some practice in the Recognise Peter Moses. Silver in her. Ball miss, you ball miss. It is just a great day isn't it? as a player to get the chance to play full house at Birmingham. I was thinking the last time you were as a player was up against Wokes, wasn't it? No, I started that again. I should have won that game. Yeah. 14 off 5. Just couldn't get the boundary. Still keeps me awake at night now, though. <laughs> should have won it. Should have won it. And I bought a no-ball that went for 6. No. Just the holding phase between the two sides at the moment. Eight runs from the over. 109 for four. There he is, Wilkes. Having a little bit of a yawn, maybe a few nerves there. But it's going to be interesting now when Birmingham decide to start taking it on. Eight and over gets them to 165, but they'll be looking for more than that. 10 and over, 179, 12 and over, creeping up to 200. But you feel now something's going to have to give. Well, if that chat was anything to go by, I, I would be surprised if it's not the Grand Dame to have a go and Elliot to try and bat through the over. They've still got batting to come. Last over then for Ingram. Bit of a hack, bit of a heave. I reckon that's probably the better way to go. Yeah, Grant Elliott coming down first ball to Ingram. Realises the part-time legs, but he's the man they're going to get after. I think Grant Holmes going to do the same too. Trying to attack him straight. Strong man to Grant Holmes. Careful of clearing the boundary with ease. time yeah just replaying that shot there Grant Elliott top edge it's going past the keeper I feel now the Grant Holmes gonna go it's good bowling very good bowling just saw him coming just dragged it down a little bit give him the benefit of the doubt saying he saw him coming See, sometimes leg spinners part time, harder to get away, just dragging it down. <laughs> Over so far. Even better. Just four with the last delivery. Just getting stuck here, Birmingham. From where they were at the start. A few nerves now in that dugout, not going all the wrong way. The Morgan fighting really hard to get back into this game, but they're doing more than that. But I did, it was a lot quicker. Trying to protect the boundary does exactly that. That is an excellent over, last over for Ingram. He finishes with pretty good figures, one for 30 from his four. Yeah, it's been good, Ingram. As we see the clips from the quarterfinal, Grant Elliott seeing this one home with the Grand Hog, timed it to absolute perfection. Playing the big shots when it needed, taking on the boundaries. That's when the experience of these two comes in. The Grand Hog, then strong shots through extra cover. One handed up for six off Ricky Clark. High fives all round, but they're going to need some of that now. now. Mike uh, has plenty of overs left, three in fact. Very good at the death, he's a canny bowler, he's played a lot of cricket here. Remember he started his career here at Edge Baston. Dragged down and helped on its way, outfield is very quick. Yeah, a bit of great grips to the white, but he won't be happy with that first ball. Trying to take the pace off, ball into the pitch. 
Well, they're one step ahead of him, going to cross onto that off stuff and just helping it round the corner. Beating the backward square leg. Good start to the over. Wanted to capitalise on that now. Four off the first ball. Heaved away. Finds the gap and four. Yeah, they feel now that it's the time to go. Yeah, back to back boundaries from Elliot. He decided he's going to take on Graham Wag. Going to target that leg side again. Getting over it. Deep in his crease. On to Ofstrom. Heaving away to it. Towards the Holly stand. For a second, Wag was interested. But the fielder may get it. He's not happy. Going to have to get back on it now because you feel Elliot. He's going to keep coming. impetus in this in his back to back boundaries nine off the first three balls of the over you're a talented lad Graham White so the ability just for him sometimes in pressure situations it's holding your nerve calm staying calm that's good he does stay calm Directed, I think, gone. So it's a good bit of work in the end from uh, De Grand on with the dive, but very athletic. Graham Wag. Yeah, good all round from Wag, cramping him for room, but then he's not finished. Does his own fielding off his own bowling, turns and throws. De Grand on with the desperate dive, but I think you're right, Nick. I think he may have been struggling with the direct hit. Please don't go for four. If you can save a boundary, this last ball, you probably take that with the best part of five overs to go. Hit firmly down the ground, won't find the gap, but will pick up one. So not a boundary of the last ball, but still 11 runs from Wags over, 125 for four. Oh, here we go, Nick. I can see you on this here. This is the bungee. The sat in the cage, ready. That Look at the lad. Look at him. He looks he a looks bit nervous. petrified. He's almost. His dam looks a bit more yeah. relaxed than him. <laughs> Last ball then. Going for the Yorker. Chipped away leg side, and this time finds the boundary. So the crucial boundary of the last ball. It goes to 15. 129 for four. Yeah, power and placement from the gun home. Oh, she's ready here, she's waving her arms, he's saying, oh, look, she's sure about this. She might not be quite so sure when she goes straight up there. It's that way, you wait, wait and see how quick that goes. Yeah, that's what you want to do. <laughs> and Bumble going ok Birmingham 129 for 4 last 5 overs 14 4s 4 6s save lobbed over extra cover save and 4 yeah, that's lovely from Elliot. We've seen a lot of power hitting from Pollock up front. But that's just stroked. Watch the way he just opens the place, doesn't try and over hit, holds his shape. He saw a big gap between long off and deep point, and he found that gap beautifully. 
go along at this rate, it's 173. Good Yorker, just a single. Loads of experience out there, I'll tell you, just using his feet, shimmying, just outside leg stump. Yeah, he likes to open up that offside. Can go leg side as well. You can see him go across his stumps. So it gives the bowler a bit of a clue. You've got to watch his feet. 170 the par score this year on this ground. Ball out before. Little tickle. It's the gamble you take when fine legs up. You don't want to be too wide. But anything down the leg side, you just got to get bat on it, and he does. Partnership is 45 from 32 deliveries. Just a single. Organs going at 11 and over. Brown Wagon 12 and over. Yeah, but it's been a good drag back after that Pollock innings. Pollock 50 off 27 delivery. Since then, there's been a really good drag back. They've got control. It's not got away from them. It'll be a cracking semi, this. Oh, this is going to be taken. Cheeky, outrageous shot, but gone. Yeah, didn't get it right at all. Just ballooned up in the air. There was pace on the ball, it was 83 miles per hour, it wasn't like it was a slower ball. Are they off? Finally are they off. The little lad's really looking forward to that, isn't he? Oh my goodness me. <laughs> Poor little fella. I'll tell you, it's gone for 32, 139 for 5.